In this video, we're going to help you once and for all stop hooking your driver, stop losing balls to the left, and generally get good at golf. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf. On this channel, we aim to help you get good at golf just one day at a time. If you want bonus content, guys, if you want giveaways, if you want meetups in the summer months, then make sure you check out our Sunday club. But today, we're going to teach you how to stop hooking the driver. So a hook ball fly is a ball that starts right of target and finishes to the left of the target. It's a shot that I used to struggle with quite a lot. That means that the spin axis of the ball is tilted to one side, which means that it is going to miss your target left. This can be a big miss to the left, it can be a small miss to the left, but it is, however, a miss to the left, which we don't want. So how can I stop doing that? The first thing that we need to think about is the swing path. So is my driver coming too much from the inside to out here? That's generally how you would create that kind of spin on the ball. We also need to think about that club face as well. Is that club face closed? Is it open to the target? Is it close to the target? How can I get that club face nice and square with a nice neutral swing path as well? Once we marry all those things together, you're gonna to hit straighter drives, you're gonna hit better quality drives, and you also need to think about the strike that you have. If you strike the ball out of the toe of the club a lot here, that generally means you are gonna hit those hooks because the club face then gears close and imparts that hook spin on it. Like we said with the spin axis, so, if I then stand to the ball and address it, the last thing I want to do is stand too close to the ball here. That means the club could well get sucked inside here. That means the club will be delivered from the inside to out. And that means you're either going to strike it out the toe or you're going to move your body backwards, which not many people can do, in order to get a nice central strike and not hook the ball. So what you're thinking, guys, is how can I keep that club face square for longer? You'll see we've changed location here. We're now on the 18th hole here at Bentham Golf Club. A lovely hole, a hole where you don't really want to be hitting it left because then you're back on the first tee, and that's not where you want to be when you're on the 18th because you finished for the day. But I want to think about that club face. How can I keep that club face nice and square on the way back? One thing I really don't want to be doing is fanning that club face wide open. You might think, well, James, if you fan the club face open and you're hitting a hook, then that's going to be okay because it's going to stop the club going left. It's going to stop the ball going left but actually if you fan that club face open you're a lot more likely to turn it on the way down because your hands are far too active and as soon as that club face starts rotating too much that's when you're really going to struggle that's when you're going to see that ball starting to turn over a bit too much so what i want you to do is just think right how can i get that club face square on the way back now square on the way back isn't here with the toe up in the air it's here, it's matching my spine angle, it's matching my body. From there, I can load up to the top of the backswing, come down through those positions again. That club face is now square again. Again, it's matching my spine. And from here, I'm gonna square that club face up with my chest. So I'm gonna turn that upper body onto the ball. And you can see now that club face isn't really moving anywhere in this position. It's just rotating around the body and all the way through here to a nice solid finishing position. Now. That's a massive factor in not hitting the ball left because if the club face is nice and square, the only other reason why you could hit it left is swing path and that would have to be disastrous. So I've got the club face nice and square and I can think, right, I want to make sure this path doesn't work too much from the inside. So when I get to the top of the backswing, I'm gonna rotate my hips, let that club come out in front of me here and move down to the ball nicely. The last thing I'm gonna do is get to the top of the backswing, the hips move forwards here. You'll see that I'll lose my posture, actually gain height there. And from here, the club's always gonna get sucked inside, then throw the club at the ball. Obviously, once you do this, you'll probably see active hands, you'll see that turning over too much, and that is how you hit the hook. So, stay in that posture, don't early extend, and that is how you hit more fairways and stop hitting horrible hooks. So valid points there from James as always but we now want to talk about different things that you can look at as a bit of a checklist so if you're on the driving range or if you're hitting hooks on the golf course let's start to break it down so one big thing what we need to look at first of all is how we are holding the golf club so how we are gripping the golf club can affect obviously what kind of shot shape we're hitting if you're somebody who has a very strong left hand where i've probably seen three knuckles there maybe even four that's going to encourage me if i return to neutral you'll see that is a neutral position that is a neutral grip and look which way the club face is pointing straight left straight away and that's going to get that ball working onto the wrong hole or out of bounds potentially so if I can get your left hand to be, well, I'm starting to see two knuckles. That is neutral. That is where we're going to be able to see when I come back down to the golf ball, 
that is going to be in this position unless I was to excessively twist my hands, which is another point we're going to talk through. With the right hand, a strong grip would look very much underneath. So from there again, if I do the same thing, if I go back to neutral, which would be here, the club face is pointing left. So if we have a combination of those two, that's going to encourage that club face to be closing. And then what we see from a lot of people is once we've done that, we'll start to go, okay, well, if I need a little bit more right, if I shuffle round, shuffle round, keep the club face there, that's going to get me perfect. You see now arm alignment, if James gets down the line there, straight away it's pointing way out to the right. It's actually pointing over to another nine of the golf club here at Bentham. And that's all that's going to do is it's a plaster. We're putting something over it right. I know I hit a bit of a hook, so if I aim further and further right, that's going to be good. You can see we start to tense up there as well, which is then going to affect how I can move that club away, how I can keep my width and how I can actually generate any speed and consistency into my golf swing. So what we need to start to do is try this on the driving range. Play around with your grip. Obviously the biggest thing you can do is obviously go for a lessons with your local PGA Pro, look for that to go through getting into that neutral grip. But if we have our left hand on here, the thumb sits just down the right hand side. Now I should be able to see two knuckles on my grip. Once we bring the left hand in, we're gonna sit that, once I bring my right hand in even, we're gonna sit that thumb just down the left hand side and that V there is going to point up towards my shoulder. That is nice and neutral. Once we've got that, we can get our arms nice and relaxed and underneath our shoulders. You'll see now I can aim much more square and I can commit to that shot, but I can still hit it left. So why could I hit it left? We've talked about grip, the grip's good, the stance and arm alignment's good, so my club pass should be good. The final thing we get, and which everyone doesn't always understand, is a release pattern. So if you're still somebody who gets into a good position at the top now, but so you're starting to get that golf club working, releasing from here, I'm gonna get that club bottoming out early and still pointing left. So I can still hit a left shot from there. So we've got to think, and we've got to do some slow motion swings that I can take this club away, I've got everything neutral, I can come up to the top, and then from here, as I work down, like James said, into this position here, you'll see that the club is matching my spine angle, and then from here, we just want to rotate through, and that will square everything up. We'll see if James comes around to face on, that's got a little bit of loft off the club, so I've got a little bit of forward shuffling, and I'm in a nice strong position there to hit it. I'm not releasing the hands, my hands aren't here, my hands aren't twisted. Everything's now into that position. And this is where something like a strike or an impact bag is something that you can look at if your local pro's going or if you go for a lesson. That's a good thing of visualizing that that club is working down. And then from this position here, it's the rotation that squares that up. So once we've got those checkpoints on the driving range, we can start to pick a target, or even out on the golf course, you can start to pick a target. So here, nice and easy, I want to come in now. I want to aim straight down the middle of this fairway. Everything be neutral, set the club, make sure my grip's good. And then from there, I'm not trying to release the club head early. I'm just trying to get the club back down nice and smooth and make sure I turn. Job. And if you do that guys, we're going to be able to stop you hooking the golf ball, we're going to start you hitting more fairways, if you're hitting more fairways, you're going to get good at golf.